Well, it was a very long wait, but just recently, Aviation's Alice Electric Aircraft took to the air for the first time. The company expects the distinctive fixed-wing model to be used mainly to carry nine passengers on regional airline services. My colleague Hanneke Weitering was lucky enough to make the trip to Moses Lake in Washington State, and she was up before the birds to watch Alice make its first takeoff. Hanneke, what was that like? What did you see? Yeah, so it was a beautiful morning. Uh, the plane took off about 20 minutes after sunrise. Um, for a minute, we thought it might not actually take off because it taxied to the runway and then taxied back. Uh, but that only took about 30 seconds. They had to change something on the instrument display panel. They said uh, the airplane came back to the runway, took off, flew two circles and came back right where it took off. Uh, the whole flight only lasted about eight minutes, which seemed kind of short, but Aviation says that that was exactly what they had planned for, and everything went according to the plan, and it was just a beautiful flight, a good day for Aviation. That's excellent, and very exciting too. I'm sure it's it's a bit like waiting for a new baby to arrive, and there's a certain amount of tension around these events. But once we got over the sort of initial excitement of the thing making its first flight, I think it's fair to say that there were also some surprises that day in terms of, of what Aviation is saying about the aircraft and what it now has in mind. Perhaps you could explain to us you know, what, what seems to be different from what we'd perhaps expected. Right. So the company had initially said that the aircraft was going to have a range of about 440 nautical miles, and they've shortened that now. Now they're saying it's going to be 250 nautical miles, which has to do with the battery technology. They were apparently anticipating that the battery technology would improve uh, by the time they took flight, but it's still kind of lagging behind. So the batteries can only right now sustain about 250 nautical miles of range. But they're hoping that by the time the aircraft uh, is in service, that they'll have better batteries and that the airplane will be able to travel uh, travel farther. Yeah, that was a bit of a twist. And it's fair to say that, you know, battery technology is everything in this new world of electric aviation. I mean, uh, really, my only surprise was that this only came up on the day of the first flight. It, as far as I'm aware, it hadn't previously been mentioned. Um, but the other interesting thing is, I think they said that now they think it's going to take aviation until 2027 to actually get this thing into service. And that is that is another delay, if that's true. Right. They initially said it would be about three years earlier, um, but they've also said that they're still kind of hoping the battery technology will get to the point where they can travel uh, 440 nautical miles rather than the 250 by 2027. Um, and the customers, they've said, are aware of this. It's not anything that's going to you know, deter the customers from wanting to purchase this kind of aircraft. Excellent. Well, let's err on the optimistic side. I'm certainly ready to, uh, to to fly in that aircraft when it enters service. And in fact, the key to Alice's performance are a pair of electric motors developed by Aviation's sister company, which is called MagniX. And recently at, a, at an air show, we were able to speak to the company about these electric propulsion systems that are being developed not only for the Alice, but also for some other new aircraft. So really the goal of MagniX is to, you know, there's a demand around the globe right now commercially and, you know, for, from, a, from a zero emissions um, capability. MagniX has taken that on as trying to develop a full a aviation motor, both on the Magni 350 and the Magni 650, to try and create a solution for those zero emissions as the world develops into the arena. Uh, we're currently already flying um, on the e-beaver and we've had an e-caravan flying. So we actually have our product line flying today in the industry. As we develop and grow now, we're looking at all the different solutions, be it full electric, hybrid solutions, uh, working with NASA, working with uh, hydrogen fuel cells, as well as just batteries, so that we can create multiple different solutions for the future of aviation. So Aviation still has a lot of work to do to complete the development of ALICE, and I think it's fair to say that it's not alone in the race to electrify air transport. So Charlie, how does Aviation's plan stack up against what the other companies are doing? 
Yes, you're right. It's a very competitive environment. And, you know, from the beginning, what what struck me about uh, the Alice project that Aviation kicked off back in, you know, 2015, but we first saw it, the Paris Air Show in 2019, is, you know, at the time when everything was about EVATOL aircraft, electric vertical takeoff aircraft, they wanted to focus on an all-electric fixed-wing aircraft. So they were leaders in that way. But since then, of course, other companies have jumped in. For example, in Sweden, a company called Hart Aerospace is now developing a 30-seat aircraft, significantly larger than the Alice, but also important to mention that it would not be all electric. It would be hybrid electric because, um, you know, we were talking about battery technology. The battery technology just isn't there yet to carry that many passengers on what would be a viable airline route. There are also other projects. For example, in France, there's a company developing a 19-seat regional electric aircraft. Um, it's it's some way behind aviation. It hasn't even built a prototype yet. So I think it's true to say that aviation really are, are pioneers out there. Everybody's watching to see what will happen with this battery issue. So, Hanneke, this was uh, essentially the your inaugural first flight that you're covering since joining Future Flight. I'm guessing you're going to be watching aviation very closely because it's pretty much your local electric aircraft company, isn't it? Oh, yep. They're very close to where I live, so it wasn't too far out of the way to, to go out there and see that flight. It was definitely worth it. And yeah, I'm definitely excited to see how battery technology improves and how the range of electric aircraft improves in the future. And, you know, maybe one of these days we'll take a transatlantic flight on a battery powered aircraft. But I think, you know, it might take a while. <laughs> that would be that would be fantastic and especially good for us uh, because, Hanukkah, there you are on, on the west coast of the U.S. I'm here in Europe. We're a long way apart covering uh, this this global industry, this global movement towards greener aviation. And please stick with us at futureflight.era. We're covering news like aviation's first flight day in, day out. And if you keep coming back to futureflight.aero, we'll have more news and information and videos for you just like this.